God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. Let us light the candle. On Sunday, May the 9th, we will be celebrating, uh, the world will be celebrating and we will be celebrating Mother's Day. But for us Christians, we say it's Christian Family Sunday. So we will honor our mother, grandmothers, great-grandmothers and all the fem important female figures in our lives who have been mother to us. Um, so, happy Mother's Day to all the mothers, grandmothers, and mother figures to people. In our community and around the world, I know that the li we know that life is full of choices. So, we are happy that you chose to spend this half an hour with us to worship God together. Today's psalm... The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 98, verses 4 to 9. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth into joyous song and sing praises. Sing praises to the Lord with the lyre, with the lyre and the sound of melody. With trumpets and the sound of the horn, make a joyful noise before the King, the Lord. Let the sea roar and all that fills it, the world and those who live in it. Let the floods clap their hands. Let the hills sing together for joy at the presence of the Lord. For he is coming to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with equity. As the psalmist says, let us sing praise with all of creation now. Let us sing praise with all of humanity at this time of service. Let us sing praise together for all of our songs come from one God, creator of all. Amen. Let us join our hearts in prayer. Let us pray. Holy God, the power of your love is beyond comprehension. The breath of your compassion without measure. In Jesus Christ, you have met us in the midst of life's joys and challenges and shown us what it means to love and be loved. You have entrusted us with the greatest commandment to love one another as Christ has loved us. In this time of worship, we offer you our love and loyalty, seeking to learn more of what love and loyalty mean for us in the midst of our joys and challenges. Receive our prayers and praise, and through the power of your Spirit, draw us closer to you and closer to each other as friends and followers of Christ, our risen Lord. Merciful God, we confess we often find it difficult to love others as you commanded. Though we intend to do your will, our priorities lead us in other directions. We seek our own security before the well-being of others. We fulfill our own desires rather than act for the common good. We justify our own interests and fail to understand the cause they take on the earth and other people. Forgive us, redirect our priorities, and renew our commitment to live out your love, 
even when it demands more of us than we accept. It is in Jesus' name we pray these. Amen. Hear the good news. Who is in a position to condemn us? Only Christ. And Christ died for us. Christ rose for us. Christ reigns in power for us. Christ prays for us. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ we are forgiven and made new by God's generous grace. Thanks be to God. Amen. Our opening hymn is For the Beauty of the Earth. Hymn number, if you want to follow along in the Presbyterian hymn book, is 434. Good morning. We have one reading today, and it is from John, chapter 15, verses 9 to 17. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer, because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends, because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my father. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. This is the word of the Lord. Would you please bow with me in prayer? May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be a 
acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Those who have been attending the gathering place for over a year by now, most of them know that uh, Bob Shibley, Robert, Ad Robert Edward Shibley, can pay, play the piano. And uh, Bob is the person who comes with me to Portal Village and Northland Point services when he is available. If he isn't, then Linda comes with me. But Bob loves to come with me to play at the services. And um, I came here nine years ago, and after a couple of months after I had came, uh, I, I had come, Bob noticed that I always pick the same four or five hymns. Hymns never change. They didn't change in the last nine years for me. The reason is because I don't have a good singing voice, so I am very happy that I can sing four or five hymns, and those are the hymns I choose. Because there with the old people, I have to sing. Sometimes I have to start singing, and those are the ones I feel comfortable singing. Now, one of them is what uh, Linda already paid, played today, is for the beauty of the earth. And the other one, one of those anyway, is abide with me. Abide with me, fast falls the eventide, the darkness deepens, Lord with me abide. When other helpers fail and comforts flee, help of the helpless, O oh, abide with me. Abide is not a word we use much these days. We do not often ask people, where do you abide? We ask them, where do you live? You will likely come across the word more times while reading the Gospel of John or by singing church hymns than you ever will in real life conversations. I feel familiar with the words abide and I used to, because of the church context, I've been living and working. And when I came to Canada, I used that word a couple of times and people looked strange at me, but I was forgiven because I used to use words um, which were more British origin. I think that's what we were taught in Hungary. Like the eggplant was a new word for me. I used to use auberge. Then what's called here station wagon, that's for me an estate. Or um, people here go for a vacation for uh, two weeks. I used to say fortnight. And for example, the pub, that's coke, for, used to be for me, or a soft drink, now I call it a pup. So you will likely come across the word abide more times while reading the Gospel of John than you ever will in real life conversation. In fact, if you read through just the first 11 verses of John 15, Jane just read, you will find the word 11 times. The sheer repetition reminds us of its importance as a theme in John's Gospel. Actually, the word abide is a crucially important theme in John's Gospel. It revisits an idea that emerges in the prologue to the Gospel of John. John 1.14 says, The word became flesh and lived among us, though... The Greek is more literally that the word dwelt among us as in a tent. Maybe another good word would be sojourned. The word pitched a tent or camped out among us and showed us the embodiment of God's love. That's closer to the original Greek context, that translation. In Jesus' life, God's love walked and talked among the people of first century Galilee and Judea. And in the passage we read today, or what we heard, read today, 
Jesus is teaching his disciples how to walk in those shoes too, especially once he is no longer walking around with them. He is preparing them to continue to dwell in that same love. Today's passage is part of a long dialogue Jesus shares with the disciples after he has washed their feet and before he is handed over to the authorities to be crucified. He is trying to prepare them for his absence, which was coming very fast approaching his, him leaving the earth. He is trying to prepare the disciples for his absence and instruct them and instruct them in how to continue to live into his ministry even when they can no longer see him. Abide in my love, he says. Make my love the house, the tent, the shelter in which you dwell and move around in, he seems to say. The word translated as abide can also be translated to remain or stay. And after the year we have had, we are familiar with those words. After a year of lockdown, quarantine, stay home, orders, and physical distancing, we know what it means to remain, to shelter in place, to stay. We, I think people have become intimately familiar with the inside of their own homes and maybe with the interior of their own minds in ways they likely haven't before. And we have had to time to think about what kind of place we want to shelter in. Priorities shifted or became clearer, which prompted changes both small and large. And we can detect that, see that very well in society. Many people moved in the past year, despite of the pandemic, actually, I just looked up the recent statistics. Um, the number of apartments which changed hand is a bit lower, was lower than before the pandemic, but private house sales um, gone up, has gone up even during the pandemic. Because many people moved in the past year and some left bustling, crowded cities in search for a quieter, slower pace of life and a little more space in a family house um, in a suburb. Some move closer to family or closer to wherever feels like home when the need for connection and a support network became impossible to ignore, like we had uh, um, the Kenny's family, Gail and Doug, one reason they moved back to Brockville was exactly the same, to move closer to a place where it felt like home, where there was connection and support network. And we have had more than a little time to think about what kind of home we want and need to abide in. Maybe you have added on to your patio to allow for a socially distanced visit with a neighbor. I knew a couple of people who did that in Port Coburn last year. Perhaps you have converted some corner of your home into an office or virtual school space. Many, many parents had to do that. Or maybe you have simply been faced with how unsuitable your space is for all the demands placed upon it this year. Now, matter no matter our circumstances, this year has trained us to have a sense of the depth of the word abide in the Gospel of John. We have become uniquely aware of the importance of home or where we dwell and of how we live within it. This year, home has made all the difference for better or for worse. To listen to Jesus' words in this passage with 2020 pandemic years is to be reminded that our homes reflect our priorities and our home base affects how we live our lives. 
You go into a house and sometimes, not sometimes, all the time, when you first time go into someone's house, you get, you look around and you get the kind of a good grasp on the per per person's personality you are visiting. Jesus' invitation to abide in his, in his love becomes all the more striking. We can imagine Jesus elaborating let my love be the foundation under your feet. Let my love permeate the walls that shelter you. And let my love from the roof arching over your head. Jesus' encouragement is not only to rest and nest in God's love, but also to live our lives in such a way that reflects that love that reflects that love built the house we live in, to live in such a way that when others see our interactions, it's clear that love drew the blueprint. And yet, just as building or making homes, home takes time, so does learning to let love be our home base. It sometimes takes an entire life time, and we still don't really figure it out. The disciples hid away in a locked room for a while before they ventured out to share the good news and carry on Jesus' ministry, before they realized abiding in Jesus' love wasn't so much about the physical space they inhabited or his physical presence with him as it was about the way they lived among others. For us too, this passage can serve to remind us that whether home has been a refuge and comfort in the past year or a place we couldn't wait to leave, we also have a home in the love of God. It's a home we carry with us like a tent. It's a, such a beautiful expression that the word tent among us, lived in a tent among us. It, it's, it's, it's a home we carry with us, like a tent. And it shows up when we remember God's love for us and when we treat others as God's beloved. It shows up when we create a loving space to really listen to someone else, to be present with them in their need or struggle. That space is a home built by love. Yesterday I had a... No, not yesterday. Yesterday... I had a very uplifting experience. Someone for one and a half hour held me such a space I had not experienced for a long time ago. And that was wonderful as I felt God's embodied love as space was held to me. It shows up when we contribute toward building a shelter for those without homes. That effort creates a space for love to dwell as our group will do that at the Out of the Cold on this coming Tuesday. It shows up when we alter our habits to show more care for creation. When you sort out the garbage and you put them, recycle them properly. That shift adds room for love to abide. It shows up in small kindnesses between strangers and friends alike. It shows up when we respond graciously to someone who disagrees with us. It shows up in all the ways, large and small, that we allow the love of God to guide us. And it shows up in mothers' selfless love for their children and grandmothers' selfless love for their grandchildren and great-grandchildren, and all that selfless love foster mothers have for their fostered children, and in that selfless love, people who cannot have their own child, women who cannot have their own child, have for those for whom they are acting almost like surrogate mothers or feel into the role of mother. It, it, that love is embodied there. This home is recognizable because, though it may involve sacrifice, it is also permeated with joy. As Jesus says to the disciples, I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you 
and that your joy may be complete. Jesus knows that there is fullness of life to be found in abiding in love, and that though his disciples' lives may be marked by hardship, all who abide in God's love experience the deep joy of dwelling there. So just as we have learned to stay and to remain this year in our homes, may we also learn to abide, to abide in God's ever-present love, the gracious and hospitable dwelling, permeated with joy. May it be so. Amen. I have talked at great length about this scripture passage of love one another as I have loved you, but it is one thing to know the words of Jesus and the stories of Bible. That in itself is not a very big thing. But it is another thing to let those words transform us and rearrange our priorities and our lives. In these moments of taking up our offerings, ask yourself, what is it that God is inviting you to rearrange about your priorities? What is it that you want to offer to the church and to the world as a practice of God's love? Pour out your Holy Spirit on these gifts and on us who gave them, gracious God, that we may abide in your love and that your love may abide in these gifts. In your loving name we pray. Amen. Let us sing, Lord, listen to your children praying hymn number 449 in the hymn book. Let us pray. God of our lives and our loving, we thank you for the signs of resurrection that are all around us, showing that life is stronger than death. Give us the grace to recognize and embrace the gifts of new life that your love makes possible for us all. As we pray for your resurrecting power to renew the world amid all its challenges. God of home and family, today we thank you for our families, especially for our mothers and grandmothers. We are grateful for their love and attention, their hard work and the deep hope they have cherished for each one of us. 
the honor before you each mother, grandmother, and great-grandmother who has died. And we pray for all those who have felt isolated from their families in this month of pandemic. Reunite us in your love. God of connections and compassion. Today we thank you for our friends and relations, for the neighbors and fellow citizens who help to make our lives complete. We thank you for smiles shared, helping hands offered, and commitments honored. And we pray for all those around us who are facing particular challenges this day. Restore our hope with your love. God of courage and new possibility, today we pray for all those who have felt life or love slipping through their fingers in the times of distancing we have had to endure, and for those who have struggled with their physical or mental health, whatever the reason. We pray for communities trying to sort out how to recover from the pandemic, and for all those worried about their personal future. Encourage us with your love. God of forgiveness and renewal. Today we pray for those whose relationships are in need of repair and for all who work for peace and reconciliation in the face of deep divisions. We pray for families, churches, communities and countries facing conflict. And ask that your spirit open hearts and minds to deeper understanding. Reconcile us through your love. As friends and followers of Jesus, we offer the words he taught us, precious to the whole family that claims his love. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Our departing hymn is Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine, hymn number 687.
Dear friends, imagine what is possible. Imagine what our community, Port Colburn, would feel like if our own hearts embraced the unconditional love God has for us. Imagine what the nation would sound like if our words echoed the love God has for us. Imagine what the world would look like if our actions reflected the unwavering love God has for us. Go forth from this place to transform possibility into reality and to join alongside God in transforming the world through love. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all today and in the days to come. Amen.